Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Politics on the Hindu's YouTube channel where we are we try to go behind the headlines in domestic politics to look at the story beneath. I'm Mistula Hebba, the political editor of the paper and the host of this particular show. Now, the Lok Sabha polls are well underway and the situation will be the same till June 4th when results are to be out. As parties hit the campaign trail, I have been looking at various states and the state of play there. We have looked at Punjab earlier and we will be going on to Maharashtra, which we've done in the past as well. But the situation there is extremely interesting, meriting a second episode. I will be doing that later. But today's episode is specifically about Jammu and Kashmir, uh, because these will be the first uh, set of big polls to be held in the Union Territory after the abrogation of Article 370 uh, on August 5th, 2019. And uh, that particular act also changed the status of Jammu and Kashmir from a full-fledged state with Ladakh within it to the splitting up of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh and to basically get them both down to the status of Union Territory, Jammu and Kashmir to still have an assembly, but Ladakh not to have one. Anyway, uh, so all of this had happened and they say these are the first set of elections that will be happening after that uh, big seismic event to have hit Jammu and Kashmir. So this is also the first set of elections that will take place in Jammu and Kashmir after the delimitation exercise which redrew the boundaries of assembly and Lok Sabha seats. Now the first question to ask here is why Jammu and Kashmir? Now as uh, a union territory it has only five seats, six if you include Ladakh, uh, it has only five Lok Sabha seats but the implications of these polls uh, for the country because the question about Jammu and Kashmir connected as it is in terms of political integration into the state of India and security issues is immense Jammu and Kashmir in terms of the importance it gets in the domestic and international discourse has always been above its weight category and therefore uh, we it, it, was, it will always be educational to look at it and the state of play there as a separate entity for the purposes of this episode. So let us first look at the history of political developments post abrogation of Article 370 on August 5th 2019. Now, on August 4th, 2019, the People's Democratic Party and the National Conference, along with Sir Jad Don and some others, declared that they would do their utmost to preserve the autonomy of JNK because by that time it became kind of obvious there was a buzz in the air that some kind of a dramatic change in the status of Jammu and Kashmir was about to happen. This was called the Gupka Resolution and the Gupka Alliance. Uh, was also announced and it was named after the Srinagar neighborhood where the meeting was held. Later on August 22nd, 2020, seven parties in Jammu and Kashmir, namely and including the National Conference, the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, the Communist Party of India, Marxist, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, People's Conference, the Ama Awami National Conference, the Indian National Conference and the Jammu and Kashmir People's Movement all came together for what they call the Gupka Declaration. The signatories once again asserted that they were bound by the status quo of August 4th, 2019, that is the day before Article 370 was abrogated by Parliament and the Gupta Declaration and parties uh, who were signatory would strive for the restoration of Article 370 and Article 35A. Subsequently, some parties left the alliance, but the big three the National Conference, the PDP and the Congress remained and they also became part of the India bloc of opposition parties. All of this had happened in the past, but in March this year, however, the Congress and the National Conference declared that they were in an electoral alliance together. And uh, that while the NC, that is the National Conference, would fight the three valley seats, 
of Anantnag Rajori, Srinagar and Baramula, the Congress would fight in Jammu and Udhampur where the Congress's support base was supposed to be still intact. Now, uh, the two parties wanted to combine their strengths in their areas of strength uh, and this had in the past uh, allowed them to sweep the local body polls in the Ladakh Union Territory in 2023. But it did leave questions over the fate of the Gurkhar Alliance and the India Bloc because a very, very important ally of theirs uh, in these formations, the People's Democratic Party headed by Mehbooba Mufti had been left out in the cold. Now, uh, consolidation of ideas in a grouping uh, uh, and issues had very obviously not translated into an electoral understanding uh, of the Gukkar Alliance or the India Bloc. It was just the Congress and the National Conference getting up and saying, okay, hey, we've decided we are going to be fighting together and this is it. Now, the sources uh, who had been speaking to us said that neither the uh, National Conference nor the PDP wanted to cede much space in the Kashmir Valley. Uh, Kashmir is India's only Muslim majority state, especially uh, the Kashmir Valley and Southern Kashmir has a large amount of Muslim population where the North, uh, National Conference and the PDP have enjoyed a lot of support uh, with the Congress getting uh, some support there, of course, and also in Jammu and the BJP largely being very strong in Jammu, which has large spots of Hindu uh, uh, majority areas. So uh, NC and the PDP thought that these three seats in the valley, uh, there was no point in ceding them to their respective previous ally in the Gukkar and the India bloc. And so therefore, NC and Congress managed to wrap up uh, uh, an alliance leaving the PDP out in the cold. Now, what we will now see, therefore, are fights pitting the National Conference versus the PDP in the Kashmir Valley and national and PDP versus Congress uh, in uh, Jammu and uh, even a triangular fight or even a four-cornered fight uh, if the BJP announces candidates for the Anantnag Rajori seat because in the in Jammu area especially, BJP is a very dominant force and therefore Congre it will be Congress versus BJP and if PDP wants to put up a uh, fight there, they could put up somebody or they could have an alliance with a local party there. Uh, so these are like uh, new situations that are arising on the ground in uh, Jammu and Kashmir in the valley. Currently, BJP has not announced uh, candidates. But things could get very, very interesting if they do. Uh, there are also some parties which are considered proxy or uh, for the BJP or the B team of the BJP, according to the other valley parties, uh, like uh, Gulab Nabi Azad's DPAP party, a Democratic Party uh, of um, uh, Democratic Azad party. And uh, therefore, these are all very, very interesting permutations and combinations. As in the case of Maharashtra and Punjab, therefore, Jammu and Kashmir polls have been split wide open. Now, this is not just the case in terms of political formations and alliances, but these are absolutely illustrated in the fights that are coming up, in the delimitation that has happened, in the boundaries that have been redrawn due to the delimitation exercise. It has made it another ground zero election, an election that uh, is not at all like all the others that have gone out in the past. Now, I have gone into the uh, details of the delimitation exercise for Jammu and Kashmir, technical aspects, etc., etc., in a previous video, which I would uh, try and include in the show notes for you to have like a ready re reference for it. But clearly, boundaries and constituencies have been redrawn, and uh, 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 although there are still three uh, uh, Lok Sabha seats in the Kashmir Valley and two in Jammu and therefore the valley uh, weightage is more. The boundaries have been uh, redrawn which has made this into a very very interesting con uh, contest. Now the most interesting of these seats via delimitation appears to be the Anantnag Rajori seat. Now Anantnag Rajori was a completely, Anantnag seat of the past was a completely valley seat. Now but this particular seat is spread across the Pir Panjal range and it now includes Rajori, 
uh, and uh, you need to cross the mountain for that and uh, uh, this seat now also includes because of all of this a decent number of voters of the tribal communities who have recently been added to the list of scheduled tribes by the BJP led central government. Now the seat consists of four districts and has logistical challenges of movement for any candidate fighting from there. But also the fact that Shopian, which falls in the Srinagar Lok Sabha district, uh, uh, Lok Sabha seat falls right in the middle of it. Now, as of the date of recording, there was a good three-way contest that was brewing there between uh, Gulam Nabi Azad, who had left the Congress and formed his new party, the Democratic People's Azad Party, which is widely tipped to withdraw from the contest. There's still some talk happening, but as I said, as of the time that I was uh, uh, recording this uh, episode of Talking Politics, he had not yet withdrawn. Then there is PDP's Mehbooba Mufti, uh, who, you know, forced to fight alone, said, OK, I'll be the candidate from my party form from the Anantnag majority seat. And then there is uh, a former minister in the NC government, Mia Altaf, who has become the NC's candidate there. Now, if the BJP feels a candidate, uh, and with this, in this seat, with two lakh Hindu voters and tribal voters who may owe some sort of uh, loyalty to the BJP because the central government has included, uh, has uh, extended reservations to these tribal groups there, uh, the contest will become very, very interesting indeed. And in, in certain ways, it encapsulates uh, the brave new world of Jammu and Kashmir politics post August. Uh, 2019 and the results of course will be illustrative of that um, the national conference's leader and former another former chief minister Omar Abdullah has also joined the Lok Sabha fray he will be fighting from Baramula now on the face of it as I said polls in Jammu and Kashmir held over five phases of the schedule that is one seat in each of these five schedules pertains to a very small section of the country and indeed the total strength of the Lok Sabha. Now the importance of the contest here lies in terms of it being the first since Article 370 was read down uh, of the message that it sends both nationally and internationally on India's democratic engagement and a pointer to how the people of Jammu and Kashmir not having exercised their franchise after 370 was abrogated are looking at their political future. Who will they go with? Will they give uh, the BJP a little bit of a chance in the valley or will the NC be their choice? Now the NC with the Congress uh, Alliance, what does that mean if they win? What does it mean if Mehbooba Mufti wins? Now the meta narrative of the larger Lok Sabha polls holds many such stories within which we shall continue to look. We looked at Punjab earlier, we're looking at Jammu and Kashmir. We will go to Maharashtra later. For this week, however, this is all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe if you like this kind of content and are looking for some more of it. You will be alerted immediately if you do subscribe. So please go ahead and press that button. Thank you and I will see you next week.